Hey, hey, everyone. Dexter from Barefoot Bushcraft again here today, working on part two of my little handle and sheath for a whittling knife build. I've done a little bit of work off camera, and this is where we're at at the moment. I finished out what I term a blank, basically a piece that you can start carving on, and I've drawn on a bit of a design that I want to be the actual knife shape. And I've also glued these two pieces together, and I've glued the blade into the handle. Um, I brought these out again. I didn't actually explain this very well when I was grinding away the other day. This is what I used to bring it down to the shape. It's basically just sort of sanding discs that go onto angle grinders. And I've borrowed my brother-in-law's angle grinder to do that. So, the next step, we've got our design all drawn on. We're going to pull out the old Dremel and start roughing out this shape here. So, yep, come along to the journey and hope it's good. Now it's actually a bit of a pretty horrible day today, so most of it's going to be shed work. We'll see if we can see if you can see any of that. It's not focusing very well, but basically it's nothing but cloud at the moment. It's been raining pretty much constantly for at least a few weeks. And yeah, it's kind of welcome. We did need the rain, but it's getting to be pretty ridiculous at the moment. Oh, hang on. A bit of blue sky. Hooray! Anyway, let's get back onto this build. Carving, it's carving time. I know what you're trying to say. You're trying to say it's time for carving. It's carving time. Ooh. Okay, I'm just about to start up the Dremel, and I thought I might actually explain. A few of you might be wondering, boy, that's not the right shape knife. And you're right with that. The reason for it is because basically of the voids and things inside. The handle wasn't too bad. The tang only goes in about that far and it's pretty centered. But on this blade side, you see that where I've got the blade actually drawn out? Because of the way that I drilled it, the cavity actually goes all the way like this as well. So I've had to widen the handle a bit up, or the sheath bit up a bit, I mean. So I'm a little bit worried about a few punch throughs, but we're just gonna have to start and see how it goes. I've also got it clamped up in this little vise here, just so I can get a bit of an even transition from the two halves. So yeah, let's get the Dremel going and start carving. I might do a little bit of a time lapse and then I might just bring you back after it's a bit more roughed out because frankly I want to put my music on and YouTube doesn't allow that. So, let's get to it, eh? Oh, and one more thing. I'm using this. Come on, focus. Focus camera. No, oh, it's not gonna focus. It's a tungsten carbide bit, pretty aggressive one. So, let's get onto it. Okay, I might leave it there and I'll get back here once it's a bit more carved out. Hey, boy. Hey, little boy. What are you up to? Come for a little visit? Ah, oh boy. He's working on a little bit of a kniff. A kniff for whittling. A whittling kniff. Oh, and he's off. See you later, Marty. Right, hello, everybody. I've got it down to this stage with the Dremel and everything like that and started a little bit of sanding on it. But, annoyingly, my Dremel here just broke, basically. I pulled it apart and tried to fix it, but there's still absolutely nothing. So what we've done is we've kind of MacGyvered this die grinder up a little bit. We've covered one of my Dremel collets up with a little bit of duct tape, well, electrical tape, and we've shoved it in the end here with one of the sanding bits on it. And yeah, hope it works. I'll be finishing the rest of it off with this until I can afford to buy myself a new Dremel. So, let's get this final bit done and then I'll show you what it's like after it's all sanded. Okay, now we've got it all down to 400 grit. That's as sort of as far as I've gone with it so far. Um, I used this little wheel, sanding wheel, on the die grinder for the first part and then I've just used a whole bunch of sandpaper and just hand sanded it. 
Now I was, oh first I'll tell you, there's a couple of bug holes, this one here and there's one here. They're not too bad, I'll probably just try to fill them up with sawdust or something. But, these ones, the camera will focus, focus, there we go. These are my oopsie doozies. Remember at the start how I told you that when I was drilling it out it was sort of a square shape rather than a blade shape? Well that's what happens if you sand it down too far. I've sort of exposed that hole a little bit. But for that, not the end of the world, we're going to use a bit of this twine here. Going to do a twine wrap on the end. Now I was actually going to twine wrap this seam as well, but I'm actually quite proud of that as funny as it seems. That's probably one of the best joints that I've ever actually done. So yeah. The next stage, well actually I should also say, I wanted to put a bit more detail into it. I was going to put like a yin yang or something on one of these two pieces, but since my little Dremel there has died, I can't really do that. And now some people might be saying, oh why don't you just use chisels? Well these two things here, these are essentially the only two chisels that I own. This one here is a little bit of a circular scoopy doo, and this one here is a bit of a flat pokey poke. And they're obviously quite big to do some sort of little de intricate detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get onto the twine wrap, I'll polish it all up, and then I'll bring you back and I'll show you the finished product. So yeah, let's get on to that. Okay, this is the varnish that I use. It's a Feast Watson clear varnish, the gloss type. And I've just realized that I haven't actually shown the polishing process on camera yet. So if that's something that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. And now to the handle and sheath. I ended up changing my mind about that little seam there, so I've done a double twine wrap on it. And I should probably also mention that it's only got one coat at the moment. And that's just because with this weather, it takes pretty much a full day to dry and I wanted to get a video out to you pretty soon. So I will be having two more coats done to it, but I'll do that off camera. And here we go. This is the handle. You can see all the nice features that have popped up there and the grain's popping out pretty nice. That there's the bug hole that I was talking about. But it's natural, I like that. It's all good. I think it turned out pretty good. I'm loving those grain structures in there. And this is the sheath part of it. That's looking pretty good too. There's a few things that I would do different with this knife build, but I might just leave that for a new video. I am planning on making a couple more of these in the future. Not entirely sure when, but stay tuned for that. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. It's been a fun little build. And have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one.